Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's RDF again with FM Scout. Today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you my guide or my tour around pre-season, what I do, what I find most important and how I set myself up for the season. In order, we're going to cover pre-season match scheduling, assessing your squad, building the tactic, getting your tactic ideas across, the team dynamics, hiring staff, setting up pre-season training schedules, player mentoring for pre-season and then finally we're going to have some results from some matches but most importantly from the dynamics and team cohesion. I know pre-season some people are not really interested and not really bothered with it but for me it's a big part of the game in my opinion anyway. I think micromanagement, handling your squad, handling your players, all of that stuff is just as important. You might get good results but there are ways you can get even better ones. Just little things like play interactions and stuff like that. That's for another video. Sorry guys I'm just waffling but today we're going to be looking at pre-season. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my profile here. I don't know why it says Portuguese guys, I'm English. I'm from London, we're just going to leave it, I like that Portuguese flavour. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to pick a team, a random one, I'm not going to select it, so I'll pick a random team, please don't let it be Liverpool or Manchester City. Watford, we're just going to run with that, an FM team. I'm just going to use what's suggested for Watford, so boom, pro licence, boom, international footballer, we're just going to run with that, confirm, start playing, here we go, Watford hired tactic here already we can see some important stuff media prediction 13 your assistant is very important and we're going to get into that a little later on hair which is not gonna we're not gonna go to whatever we're not gonna go to the me media i don't really like the media i hate the media boom now here we are first day in the office as the watford manager so what we're gonna do yeah we're gonna accept that club vision that's that's fine this page here important for me we're gonna get right into it we're gonna get into match scheduling On the first day, usually your team is going on a tour. And what I do, I always cancel the tour. The reason why I cancel the tour is because I want to minimise as much travelling as I can. I want to get the most training sessions as I can impossible, and I don't want to waste time in my schedule because I'm travelling. As you can see, we don't have any tours, so there's not a tour to cancel. But usually it's around here somewhere where you can cancel your tour. For me, that is a good thing, especially in your first year. I want to spend as much time as possible with my players at the beginning. But what I am going to do, and what I usually do, is cancel all the friendlies. We're going to arrange some more. In the first week, at the end of the first week, we're going to do one. What I usually do is pick okay teams. I don't like to pick rubbish teams. Rubbish teams, smashing rubbish teams, 7-0, 13-0. Okay, your morale goes up, but it's really hard to judge your tactics against poor teams. So I like to arrange friendlies at home against teams that are winnable, but they're also good teams. Similar reputation, there's Gent, Gent are a good team, Rapid Vienne, who else? Espanyol, and I don't know, Lucky Adansk. Oh, they, they don't, be careful here, it's like unlikely they want to travel this far for a friendly. So I'll just change it, okay, from Poland to UK, it's not that far, it's a two hour flight, but okay. We'll pick Hoffenheim. So what we want to do is go back to arrange friendly, and you just want to do this here again. Maybe you want another week of just a breather. So we're gonna pick here, then here, then here. Oh, first game of the season, Arsenal at home, very winnable. So there we go, lads. My matches is all set up. There's plenty of home matches. Home matches equals less travelling. Now the next thing I like to do is assess the squad, see who's worth keeping, see who are the main players. The only way I do this is I just go to reports and I click ability and I sort this so now I know the core is one of the main players alongside Del Fayou, Will Hughes, Troy Dini, Roberto Pereira and Etienne Compue. So these players here I'll be looking to build my team around. And then what I like to see as well is the potential. So Dominigos Quina, João Pedro. So these are the players I'll be looking to build around for the future. What I also like to do as well, go to my under 23s and 18s. Sometimes you might find someone that will be useful. Adalberto Penaranda already, I've found someone that can be useful for the first team. So he probably won't start a lot of games, but already that's a decent player. So we're going to move to first team. Isaac success again, very, very good rating for the senior team in potential. This will be my squad for the season going forward. Of course, I can look at signings, but that's for another video. I don't usually make signings unless I feel I need to. Now, what I like to do is compare my squad with the rest of the teams in the league. 
The reason why I do that is for a few reasons. I want to find my weakness so I can practice my weaknesses in training, especially in preseason. I want to know my strengths. I want to find my strengths out for my tactic so I know what to use in my tactics. Also in training, sometimes in training, I want to improve on my strengths. Of course, you don't want your strengths to start declining. You still need to practice what you're already good at. So just for example, if you pick Man City, you know, okay, everyone in the team can pass great. It's excellent. In training, I, we don't really need to train that. Ooh, yes, you do. You'll be passing a lot in matches. That is your tactical style. So in training, you would need to practice your tactical styles. So to compare my squad, I go to team report. I go to comparisons. And here we are. We've got an average height of 6'4". That's pretty good. All this other stuff is not really important to me right now. So all positions. We make very poor decisions. That's something to look into when we're training. Our first touch is okay. Our passing is okay, I guess. It's on 12. I like, in my head, I think the average in the Premier League will be 13, but you can actually see the average here. The average is 12.67, so if you round that up, it's 13. Our strength for one of the strongest teams in the leagues, very low work rate, maybe a tactic that requires a lot of work rate, might not be the best, but that's not to say that we're actually poor on work rate. Average is 13 and in the league is 14, so we're not far behind the average. Teamwork, we're around the average, just below it. In aggression, below that. Goalkeepers here, highest throwing. Already, I know, that's the way I might want to distribute now. So what I'm going to do is just put throw it long on distribution. And I'm just going to leave that so I know that's what I want. We're pretty much okay with the goalkeeper. So we know that we don't really need to improve anything there. In defence, we need better man markers. We need better players with positioning. My interpretation of that is let's not use tight marking. And our defence positioning is not very great. So what I'm going to do is defence width are narrow so teams don't expose the weak positioning. Again, this is my interpretation of it. This doesn't mean it's a fact. So now if we go back to the comparison in defence, maybe I'll add a midfield there as well. Like, look, position is even worse. We're bad at positioning. Now, when I'm signing someone, if I'm looking for a midfielder, for example, and I want a deep lying playmaker, high positioning and high passing ability. The average positioning in league is 11.44, round up is 12. So now I want a player with passing 14, positioning of 12 as my deep line playmaker. This is what I'll be looking for. In midfield, poor vision, okay passing. So we're pretty much okay. We're pretty much average, look, below average, below average. Technique wise we're average decision wise we're below tackling we're below but we do have okay passing pretty much leave that stuff blank for now we're gonna go for attack poor finishing oh wow but what we do have is acceleration and pace and so now that i know i've got some pace up front maybe i do want to pass into space to try and use the pace of the strikers advance forward of course there's moving to channels get further forward so they'll be looking to use their pace to get into positions but again we've got decent off the ball decent anticipation so we're pretty much decent attack wise but decent defense wise our midfield is pretty much our weak link so that might tell me okay we might need five in midfield so voila at the moment i'm there with a 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one. we're gonna pass into space throw it long and defend narrow physically we've got decent acceleration decent agility balance we're good physically low on stamina because we're low on stamina do i want to be closing down all game no i don't so i'm pressing intensity you might not want it all the way up to extremely urgent more urgent or standard is going to be the best counter press maybe not i might want to regroup go back to comparisons mentals were pretty weak and mentals pretty weak so again aggression were below average so maybe aggressive tactics ain't the way to go anticipation i think we're okay bravery but we're below average so get stuck in might not be the best option composure i think we're okay the average is 12.89 low concentration so those dying minutes of games i might lose a lead or start conceding i know the reason why is this low concentration so you might want to sign players with better concentration but determination we're above average flair we're above average or around average off the ball above average positioning we're poor teamwork we're below average vision we're below average work rate way below average so that's how i compare myself with the other teams in the league So now we're actually going to look to build a tactic. So the Corey, box best role, box the ball midfielder. If we check him, good work rate with a good stamina. He runs forward, gets forward further. We're going to use the Corey in centre mid. Again, Del Fayou, he's a creative player, he's a winger. Will who's technical, advanced playmaker. 
Another technical player again, this time Pereira on the left wing, a physical midfielder, centre mid, deep line playmaker, passing 15, vision 14, off the ball positioning on 15, that's okay, come deep to get ball. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to select the deep line playmaker. Usually I would use play out of defence, play out of defence makes players drop, but I don't need to play out of defence because already the deep line playmaker is going to come deep to get the ball. So we're going to put Ben Foster in goal because he's going to be the main goalkeeper, of course. And then now we're going to look for our best centre-backs, which it says here, Craig Dawson. He's a leader, decent leadership skills, good determination, good teamwork. And he's also got good positioning. So I'm going to use Craig Dawson as the right centre-back. For the left centre-back, it's either going to be Craig Kafka or Cabasele. I'm more likely to go with Craig Kafka. For the right-back, Kiko Firmenia. He looks the best here. He's a physical player. And out of these two, I'm going to go with Adam Messina. And for the striker, I've got many options. There's lots of players here, but what I'm actually going to use is... Sa. He's the pacey player with a lot of agility so he can close down very well, balance. His aggression is not the highest but he's got decent bravery. So from what I've already got, here we look, we've got a great partnership already in the centre mid that is positive. The Corey, I'm more likely to pick a role that's going to require a lot of stamina, a lot of getting up, getting forward and a lot of tracking back. And for Will Who's, like I said, we've already got a playmaker. We don't need two in midfield. I personally like my playmaker to be the deepest playmaker. So I'm actually going to use a Mazala. For a winger, we're going to use attack. For the other side winger, which we know he's best as inverted, we're going to use support or attack. So now I've built a, just a quick template, but this is basically how I start building a tactic. So I already know we have issues here on the left side of attack. I already know we've got issues between the centre mid and the striker. And a little fix the way to do that is I might use my box to box. I'm just going to tell him to get forward. By him getting forward, he should cover these areas a little bit better. We also got slight issues here, but relying on my winger to sort that out. You've already got an idea of the team's weakness and the team's strength. Maybe you want to build around that. But if you're looking to build a tactic with your own ideas, this is a good place to start. So what I'm going to do for you guys, I'm going to put my idea of a tactic. I like to start out of possession. Out of possession for me is the most important. In the Premier League, there's a lot of pacey strikers. So I don't want to go much higher. I would get this line to higher. And now, am I going to counter the teams? Am I looking to press the teams? Of course, we already got regroup. So we're not going to press exactly. My line of engagement, it can be standard or it can be higher. I don't want to pull it on standard because we're using a DM. I feel this bit can be easily congested. What I'm going to do is go higher line of engagement. Give my team a little bit more space to play in. Because I'm getting my ideas across. I'm going to use offside trap. I'm not going to use get stuck in because we don't have the greatest aggression. By pressing intensity, we're going to go slightly more urgent. I'm doing this because of the higher line of engagement and the higher defense line. Again, title marking. No, we're not going to do that. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution. I will select that because I don't like opposition playing from the back. When we have won the ball, I do want to counter. And when the goalkeeper has the ball, I prefer tactically to distribute to full backs in possession. I know we don't have the best passes and the best vision. But again, one more time, I'm literally I'm going to check the first touch of my team okay so it's below average so pretty much the passing and the tempo i'm going to leave standard i'm going to let the mentality change that whatever mentality i go with that's the mentality my, my players passing directness and tempo will be at i want to run at defense we've got decent flair in the side that's what i've gone for and the next choosing the mentality this is basically on you again this is getting your ideas across a little contradiction for a minute we're going to stop taking in the comparison page just for the mentality because i'm getting my ideas across that's the mentality i'm going to go for attack and mentality doesn't always just mean that your team's going to be an attacking base team but i want my team to take more risks on the ball and i want them to do it in a more urgent fashion because again i am also countering teams so i'm going to go with the attacking mentality i might change my fullbacks to wingbacks because i like attacking wingbacks and there we go that's my tactic for now of course during friendlies and matches you'll be tweaking along of course <laughs> So the next bit I find important is the team dynamics. You need to see where your team are at. Team cohesion is poor. So if I didn't look at this and I didn't know much about it and I just went through and I started this season with poor team cohesion, I can't then expect a good start. If I start poorly in the season, this can be a reason why. So of course, during pre-season, I'll be aiming to get my team cohesion up. I'll be aiming to improve my weaknesses, which is passing and vision and work rate, stamina. 
I've got a strong influence over a number of players, that's not the main concern. Dressing room atmosphere, there are many contrasting personalities through the club. Important. The mental state in the team is slightly disappointing. This will slightly impact players' positioning during matches. So we've really got poor positioning, we don't need more. Players will experience some issues with their vision and reactions to events unfolding when playing. Wow. So, during pre-season, this is what we're going to be looking to improve on. Now we're going to look at the hierarchy, see who the team leaders are, who the highly influential players are. To me, all these players are key. If we can keep these players happy, more importantly, if we can get these players on form, then that is a good sign for the club. And that's how I look at dynamics in pre-season. I like to get to know my team get to know what's happening, see who the team leaders are. So if I don't check this page and I think, oh, Mariapa is not good, I should sell him. Some players might become unhappy, but also Mariapa might hold some knowledge about the club that I don't know about. Just because he's not good enough, that might not be a good reason to sell him. And next thing I do is look at contracts. Which one is running out? As we can see here, we've got a few contracts running out. These players, I believe they can run out of contracts anyway. They're not very important to me. I also want to look at my key players. So for example, Dukure, he's wanted. His contract is up in 2023, he's on 70k, but I might want to give him an approved contract. At the moment, he doesn't want to because there's interest shown, but I want to offer him a contract for that exact reason, to get the interest away from him. But someone like Nathaniel Chaloba, we'll just give him a new contract just for the sake of things here. We're just going to finalise that. And what should happen is his morale should actually go up too. <laughs> Now, the next thing I look for is staff. I know a lot of people actually look for staff at the beginning. It's like the first thing they look at. For me, it's like it's actually pretty much the last thing I look at on the first day during pre-season. The reason being, I like to sign staff that are suited to my ideas. Staff search, new search, and my, like I said, an assistant manager to me is important. So I'm going to look for assistant manager. I'm going for a tactical pressing style. We are pressing more urgent, so I'm going to look for someone that likes to press more urgent. Tactical style. Play mentality. I want someone that plays adventurous or attacking. So this guy might be the guy for me. So I'm going to just put offering for Luis Miller. He wants 5.75, but I've only got 5. Okay, he's agreed with 5, so he'll be coming. For coaching staff, again, I like to follow the same thing. It's just my preference. Some people just look at attributes alone. I like to look at other things regarding tactical side of things. So what I do is just find stuff that is good for my tactical style. And now, last but not least, is the training schedules. Now we know a little bit more about the team, we know a little bit more about the weaknesses and what you don't have to do is create a whole new schedule, a whole new regime, you don't need to do that, you can use the presets. So your assistant manager will be telling you, hey, this is what I recommend and what you can do is go by the recommendation, so tactical earlier, but now for the physicals, because I know I want to improve work rate, I want to improve stamina, I'm obviously going to go with endurance. This is going to be important. Another thing that my team is, isn't great at is possession. And because the assistant wants to focus on the tactical side of things, it, to keep things tactical and also improve my weakness, I'm going to select a defensive shadow play. This will improve my positioning, which is a weak link. And I believe concentration, I think it was, that was a weak link in my defense. So that is the primary focus. My defenders improving these things. But as you can also see, the team cohesion is slightly increasing too. So just for the sake of things, I'm just going to build one. So we've got endurance, blah, 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 blah. Again, I'm just going to add endurance. I'm going to use a community outreach and team bonding. So here we are. That's just one week. And that's what I pretty much do for all the weeks. So boom, there we are. I've done my pre-season schedule that I would use based off the information that I found out myself as a manager. There's a lot of endurance. That's improving my stamina and my work rate. Some defensive shadow plays in there to improve my defensive positioning. I've got possession, a lot of possession to improve my passing. Passing for me is key. I've also got match reviews. I want my players to learn about the tactic, what went right, what went wrong. I've got a lot of community outreach and team bondings. This is again because of dynamics, the team cohesion is poor. So to get this team cohesion up, a lot of team bonding, a lot of community work, also match games. Match games is, is a, another way to get team cohesion up, getting players used to your ideas. <laughs> Thank you.
I might do a separate video on this but this is how I personally set my team mentoring up. As you can see in dynamics, the team cohesion is poor. The dressing room atmosphere is actually going down too. What I want to focus on is building relationships. I'm going to put players in mentoring groups to try and improve players' relationships on the field. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go to mentoring, add group. My left side can get a good relationship. So what I'm going to do is just put... I don't know, LS for left side, add players. I'm going to put all the players that will be playing on the left hand side of the pitch in one group, add players. Add group, I'm going to type in RS for the right side, the exact same thing. I'm going to do one for my centre backs, so CBs. And then last and not least, my CMs. I've got a lot of them. The rest are strikers, but as I'm only playing one striker, they won't really build relationships. This is what I got from my training mentoring. I will only use this in pre-season. To stress, I'm only doing this to try and build relationships. The aim for this is trying to build relationships. I'm not going to sit here and say this, this is a guarantee, this will work. But what I'm going to do throughout the pre-season is pretty much is play my best team in most of the matches and get my players used to each other. I already know that my centre mids has got a great relationship. I might throw in some backup players so they can get good relationships during the season in case they need to play games, in case someone gets injured. So now what I'm going to do is skip the preseason for you and we're going to show you some results. So we're back four to five weeks later. As you can see, the team cohesion hasn't changed much, but underneath it says the players are blending well together. So there's been no significant change or there might be very minor ones. But bear in mind, this is only four to five weeks. Before the international breaks, I think, I believe there's another four weeks. So hopefully this will improve in another four weeks again before the first international break. But as you can see in the dressing room atmosphere, it's good again. But there used to be two concerns here. Now there's only one. So something has changed there. Regarding the tactic, there's no noticeable change of relationships. Of course, I'm not expecting them to have this perfect relationship right now, but I'm hoping this will help a relationship develop over the coming weeks. So now what I might do again is go to the first international breaks just to see how far we got with this. We're back for the results and wow, Watford are currently sitting on top. So these are the results. The first game we drew 1-1 at home to Arsenal pretty much even I made a huge mistake I didn't have no subs but I don't feel that's the reason why we drew of course Roberto Pereira was very tired by the end of this but it was pretty much even then we went away to Sheffield United much more clinical but by this point by these two matches I realized something I might need to change something so what I did on the left wing I put inverted winger on support but with the left wing back, I went for the wing back on the attack. The reason why I did this is because our distribution was to the wing backs. Neither of them were risky enough in possession to get the ball forward to the danger people. Because they are on support and we check their player mentality, is only on positive. So they would take little risks with the ball and they aim to keep possession. Distributing to the wing backs, I would like to have one keeping possession okay with possession while the other one is a little bit more risk taking. He's very attacking, so he takes a lot of risks. Also changed one of my centre-backs to pull playing centre-backs because we realised we are a counter-team. Both centre-backs are central defenders. They were kind of keeping possession more or possession better. They weren't looking for the counter-ball. So if we go back to results, after I made this tweak, look at that. We went away to Southampton. First half, we pretty much dominated, but we couldn't score our chances. We ended up winning that game 3-0. Next game was at home to Bournemouth, a game which was much more clinical than opposition. Then it was the Carlin Cup game, the EFL Cup, and we drew 1-1, but we won on penalties. And then the last game was away to Tottenham, easily the most impressive performance yet. If we go to our tactics, no relationships built. Our centre-back got injured, which means I had to put Cabasele, which he already had a good relationship with Cathcart. there had been no relationship changes on the flanks either. But if we go to dynamics, look. Things are changing. Team cohesion. The team's collective mental state has a slight improvement. This will generally improve players' positioning during matches. That's great. Players will experience a slight improvement to their vision and reactions to events unfolding when playing. 
This is not to say that the mentoring 100% done this, had an effect, of course we also had good results, we haven't lost a single game yet, but in my head, my own philosophy, my own ideas, I like to believe that, that this had a positive effect. Also the dressing room atmosphere, as we can see, that is just shot up, that's gone to excellent, and the managerial support has gone to very good. We can see improvements in the dynamics, improvement in dynamics will only improve our results. Before there was only 4 players in the first team that were currently considered very happy, now we have 21. Incredible. So now that I'm happy with the results, I will go to mentoring and, and we're just going to clear all these groups. The reason why I'm clearing these groups now, because now I feel it's the perfect time, I've got what I wanted, I've got what I wanted to achieve, I've got good relationships, though they're not physical in a tactic page, I know it is improving in dynamics. I've got good results, of course, so I know that it's not taking a negative effect on my results. And also, nobody has taken traits of another person so far. That is, of course, the risk of doing this mentoring stuff is taking traits of other people. Sometimes traits can take a little time, so you can give yourself a short period of time in doing it. Maybe you can avoid taking player traits, but you still might get some. It just depends on your save. So that's it, guys. Watford currently first, that was my guide to pre-season, we had a very good pre-season, I know a lot of people do it differently and I hope this will inspire people to take more care during pre-season, pay a little more attention, it could be the difference at the end of the season, losing games against teams that you shouldn't have, maybe because your team never had the idea of the tactic straight away, where those losses could have been draws and those draws could have been wins, it's all about the fine margins, I'll put so much effort in if it just means I'll get two extra points at the end of the season because those two extra points can be the huge difference between getting relegated and staying up, it could be the difference between getting European qualification and being mid-table or it could be the difference between winning the league and being a runner up. So that's it guys for the tutorial training. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if you want more content from RDF. Peace.